that. That's not so a why am I not allowed to record a sanctioned Don't brown activity? Here. Hold on. I want to know why I can't record. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. All right. Do not touch me. All right. Do you want to be arrested? For what? You're, you're what am I going to what what am, what am I be arrested for? No. Turn what, it off. what am I being arrested for? Do me a favor. No, it's not not you're not allowed to film in a federal courthouse. You're not allowed to film in a federal courthouse. Why, why is he being arrested? Because he's filming. He has the right to record. That's a First Amendment right. Arresting you, Arresting you. Mike, could you help out with that? I'll be right back. I've been this call LA, I've I'll call LA 100. Yeah. Marshall's here or something. Oh my gosh. So what they are doing right now is they are holding a secret meeting for the LA County Sheriff's Oversight Commission. They're holding hey, it Justice in the U.S. Court of Appeals building court. because they don't want the me taking in there for what some reason. Where are the FPS or Marshall's come pick him up? Today is March the 30th, 2018. It is Good Friday, the day that Christ went to the cross for our sins. Yesterday, I shot a live stream detailing some new information about my court case that I thought was pretty shocking. And today, we have even more revelations. Very briefly, I'll get into what's going on here. So on August the 24th, 2017, our group attended a meeting of the L.A. County Sheriff Oversight Civilian Commission. It's an unelected board for the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Typically, the meeting is held in a building called the L.A. Metropolitan Water District, which is a building open to the public. I had been to the meetings at the L.A. Metropolitan Water District, filmed, put the videos on YouTube with absolutely no incident whatsoever. On this particular day in August, the meeting had been moved to a federal building, the Federal Court of Appeals building in Pasadena, which as we all found out right away, Americans have no rights in that building. I was the second person to go through the security screening and I was told that I was not allowed to bring in my camera. They more or less told me that cameras were not permitted in the building, period to which I asked why they got all crazy on me and then eventually when I realized that they were not going to be reasonable and I say reasonable because I was trying to tell them that the meeting that was taking place in the other room right down the hall was a California Ralph M. Brown Act meeting which means it is open to the public I am allowed to attend I am allowed to video record and disseminate those videos across the internet which I had been doing previously. When I came to the realization that they were not going to be reasonable and listen to what I was saying I turned on my camera to ask to get on record why they were not allowing me to go into a Brown Act meeting that is open to the public. Within 10 seconds they had me in handcuffs, drug me away, I was charged with a misdemeanor failing to comply with the lawful order of a court officer. In yesterday's video, I uh, let everybody know that the federal government is now, and I say federal government because I was arrested in a federal building, I am under the federal jurisdiction, so I am dealing with the federal courts. And yesterday, the federal government basically told us that if my two-star witness testify, that they'll be facing prosecution because they'll be admitting to breaking the law as part of their testimony. So they are trying to intimidate my witnesses. The law they are claiming is they are saying that all three of us broke the law when we turned on cameras inside of that building. Myself, of course. Behind me in the line was an LA Times reporter who filmed me getting arrested for filming. And then one of our group leaders, Robin Vidston, she actually was allowed to take a camera into the building, which she'll be testifying on, and she filmed for about an hour of the actual proceeding. And she was not arrested, but they are now threatening her with possible prosecution if she takes the stand 
and admits that she filmed inside the meeting. So yes, the federal government, they are trying to intimidate my witnesses from testifying. Well, there's more today. And very briefly before I get into that, I want to let you all know that about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, my attorney asked the prosecutors what exactly it was they were looking for because I was facing, or I am still facing, uh, 35 days in jail as well as $5,000 in fines. And he was asking, are you guys actually going to try to put me in jail over a nonviolent misdemeanor to which they said no. All they want is the conviction plus the original $280 citation, which flabbergasted us because they are spending tens of thousands of dollars of federal tax dollars to prosecute me and for what? For a measly nonviolent misdemeanor conviction as well as $280? It just didn't make sense. So today, uh, I got this from the prosecutors. It's their brief they're submitting to the court. It's 10 pages about how I'm such a terrible person and how I deserve to be uh, convicted. And there's something very shocking in the middle of this. And this is their motive for why they are prosecuting this case. And it's very sinister. So it says, Defendant contends that he was attempting to attend a public meeting of the L.A. County Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission, LACSCOC, a California state organization, and that he was entitled under California's Brown Act to bring his camera into the event and film the event. As a threshold matter, defendant cannot establish that rights of public access granted by a state could override federal regulations that apply on federal property. Moreover, even if defendant subjectively believed he had a right to videotape proceedings inside the federal courthouse, that belief would not justify his failure to follow the lawful directions of the authorized officers. Now, my lawyer said and I don't know the basis of all of this, that this case law that they are citing isn't even accurate. But what's more important is they are admitting that they are prosecuting this case because it is their desire to set a precedent that state, county, and local governing bodies like your city council, like your county board of supervisors, that they have the authority to move their meetings into a federal building so that if you try to go in there with the camera, you can be arrested. So I was not incorrect when I stated while I was being arrested that they were trying to have a secret meeting. I'm going to repeat that one more time. They are prosecuting me because they want to set the precedent that these governing bodies that are supposed to follow the Brown Act, which means the meetings are open to the public, which means we are allowed to videotape and disseminate that information. They want to set the precedent that those boards, bodies, and commissions have the authority to move their meetings into federal buildings so the public cannot videotape them. They actually want to set the precedent that our local city council cannot, can now operate secretly without the public knowing what is really going on. Sure, they'll let you in after they check ID because that's what they did to us on the day that I was arrested. They had us check ID. Sure, they'll let you in, but they will not let you broadcast the proceedings. And that is an extraordinarily dangerous precedent these people are trying to set. So the people that are prosecuting me, they are showing how corrupt they truly are by the fact that, number one, they are going as far as they can to prosecute a nonviolent misdemeanor when they allow people who commit much more egregious crimes off the hook on a regular basis. I showed the example yesterday how the U.S. attorneys in San Diego, they let 
they dropped the charges of an individual who was caught smuggling 77 people into our country. So the federal government dropped that case within one week, but have every desire in the world to prosecute my case. They have also shown their corruption that they are actually willing to go to the lengths of intimidating my witnesses, threatening them with prosecution if they testify on my behalf. And lastly, they are showing their corruption because they are admitting that the reason why they are prosecuting this case is they want to set the precedent that local government can operate in secret. And so the last thing I want to cover very quickly, this is the other piece of evidence that I have that I have not gone public with. Now, as I have stated, the LA Times, they were present at the time of the incident and they wrote an article about what happened on that day. Now this is all public knowledge, you can find it on the internet. The article is titled, Clash of Rules at Sheriff's Hearing by Maya Lau. So this, the article itself is no secret, but what's in the article is very damning. So this right here is Robert Bonner. He is the chair of the LA County Sheriff Civilian Oversight Commission. This commission is an unelected board that oversees the LA County Sheriff's Department. They were appointed by the LA County Board of Supervisors. Mr. Bonner is a retired federal judge and here's what he said in the newspaper as to why this all happened. Robert C. Bonner, a former federal judge who serves as chair of the Civilian Oversight Panel, said he recommended that the federal courthouse be used for the meeting. The commission has been trying out different locations in search of a more permanent home. So we know who is responsible for moving that meeting. It is a retired federal judge who desired to have the meeting in a federal courthouse because he knows the rules of the federal courthouse. So he knew exactly what he was doing. He then goes on to say, the cameras are not allowed in a federal courthouse. That's all I could tell you. These aren't my rules, he said. Exactly. He knew exactly what he was doing. As someone who had served in the federal courts for decades, he knew that we could be arrested if we try to take a camera into his meeting. And here's the last thing he says. Bonner said he was not familiar with certain provisions of California's open meeting laws known as the Ralph M. Brown Act and that he relies on county counsel for advice on the legalities. Why is it that people would have to have their own separate audio recording when we have an audio recording that picks up everything that's said, Bonner asked. So the federal judge is claiming ignorance of the law. What an irony. Then, he lets us know that he doesn't understand why we want to tape these meetings. He is basically giving us motive that he does not want to be filmed in a public setting. And why is that? Because he's a federal judge and federal judges don't have to be filmed. So he doesn't like it when we go to his meetings and pull out our cameras. So what did he do? He orchestrated the meeting to be moved into a federal building because he knew what the rules were of the building. So he deliberately set this up so that we could all walk into a trap and get arrested. So he could have his meeting without any kind of people knowing what he was doing. Now he does say that there are audio recordings that are released, I think he says they're released weeks, yeah, they're released weeks after. Well, first off, a recording released weeks after is insufficient because if something major happens, the public deserves to know right away. And secondly, if you've ever actually listened to these audio recordings of government meetings, you don't even know who's talking. So this is all about lack of transparency. This is about having secret meetings in the federal government. They want to go along with this. They want to set the precedent that these local governing bodies can move their meetings into federal facilities so that people like me can be arrested when we try to tape them. 
So that's all I'm going to say for today. I just want to thank everybody who donated yesterday. I'll be sending all of you thank yous personally when I get the chance. Thank you again. God bless. Thank you very much.